we come today to moving from believing to knowing. Our study is between the Gospel of John and 1 John. Identifying the Word and the Life. John 1, 1 and 5 says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the light was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. When you come to the dictionary, there's 12 different definitions to the word word. Can you imagine how confusing that might be? We're only going to look at one of them today, and that's the seventh one. Often capitalized. The expressed or manifested mind and will of God. Also seen as the gospel in a gospel sense or in the logos sense. When we think about the word, we think about the creator because of what we just read. We think about the fact that when he came, he came to bear our sins and the fact that he was God in the flesh. What I'd like to do is take you back to the Old Testament for a few minutes and look at a, an interesting word for, the, for God. In the beginning God, or Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. Hebrew Elohim is a plural form for one God. In Deuteronomy 6, 4, and wonder sometimes why they never caught this in the Old Testament, except that they were blinded that they would not see until the glorious light of the gospel shined through. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, Elohim, is one Lord. It was already evidenced in the Old Testament that God was plural unity and unity plural. Genesis 1 26, and God, or Elohim, said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Again, here is Elohim. You go to Hebrews chapter 10, and you might want to make some notes in your Bible on here. It talks about the first person of God in verse 9, and it says it's the Father that wills everything that happens. When you come to verse 10 to 14, the second person of the Godhead, the Son, works it. The Father wills it, and the Son works it. And when you come to verse 15, puts it all together in one nice package in just six verses. The third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit witnesses it. God the Father wills it, God the Son works it, and God the Holy Spirit witnesses to it. That's their primary role in the Godhead. They are all our Creator. They are all our Savior. They are all Lord of Lords and King of Kings. But they have their individual roles that they, they maintain as one God. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, Elohim, is one Lord. Old 
Testament has many proofs of the Godhead. And I never heard this word before, I apologize for it, but it's called the theophany. The theophany is simply this a visible manifestation of the second person of the Godhead. The plural word of that is theophany, or more than one appearance. And it is amazing to me as I can't, I don't have the time this morning to go into all of these, but let me just share a few with you. The angel of the Lord in Genesis 21, 17, and God, Elohim, heard the voice of the lad, this lad being Ishmael. And the angel of God, Elohim, called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What is of thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God, Elohim, hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. We often think about how God deals with the Jewish people. <coughs> the descendants of the Isaac. But he also dealt with Ishmael because he is the God of all creation. He loved Ishmael as much as he loved Isaac. And Elohim, the plural God, came to that rescue point where Sarah said, get him out of here. Abraham grudgingly and did what his wife told him to do, but God intervened. God, Elohim, the Godhead, because God willed that the Son was performing and the Holy Spirit was witnessing to him. Here's some other examples. Jacob wrestled all night long. And in Genesis chapter 32, Elohim said, Jacob, you got the power of God to change your name. You know it. Elohim did. It was his will. Jesus working at the Holy Spirit wasn't the same to it. About the bush that didn't burn. God, Elohim, called to him. Moses. Exodus chapter 3 verse 4. I don't know how they could have missed it all these years and still miss the very fact that the one God of Israel is Elohim, a plural unity God. The Father who wills it, the Son who works it, and the Holy Spirit who witnesses. Joshua, ready to captain the Lord's host. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they're in the fiery furnace in Daniel chapter 3, there's a fourth man walking around. Who was it? The second person that God had. In 3... 25 A.D. They finally had the first council of Nicaea. And the purpose of that council was to resolve disagreements in the church of Alexandria over the nature of Jesus in relationship to the Father. In particular, whether Jesus was the same substance as God, the Father, or merely a similar substance. That council had an uh, unknown number of people for sure, somewhere between 230 and 318 attendees at that, at that council, and they voted. And there was only two votes that agreed with the Arians. Have you ever heard of the Arian heresy? The Arian heresy is simply this, that Jesus is not 
you are. Like God, but he's not God. And this whole council, if I take even the, the low number of 250, only two of them disagree that Jesus was not God. And yet today as we live and breathe and we have our being, there are thousands of people today that will claim that Jesus is not God. Now, let me just say one thing before you get confused between the difference between Arianism and Arminianism. Arminian has to do with something entirely different. In fact, that didn't even come along to a thousand years, actually 1,200 years later. And Arianism is simply this. It has been already decided in 325 that when you read the Bible and put it together, Elohim is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Father willing it, the Son working it, and the Holy Spirit witnessing to it. It's already the Son. John 1, 9-14 says this, and that, and that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Why, well, I thought the Word made it. Now here it says the light made it. Because you see, the light is still the second person of God. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to those that believe on his name. And what is his name? He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is Elohim, the second person of the Godhead. I personally believe that the word of God is very clear that if you don't believe that Jesus is God, you're not going to get saved. Because you see, when he paid the price for sin, it was sin, he would, the word became flesh, dwelt among us, and he paid the price for our sin, because he was the sinless one. He was God in the flesh. Which was born, not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of men, but of God. I wish they did. He said it was. When that baby was born in Bethlehem, that baby was born by the will of God. God willed it, the Son performed it, the Son worked it, and the Holy Spirit witnesses to it. The King had decided that's the main point you need to remember today. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This then is the message which we, here we come to 1 John now. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. He's the word. He's the light. He's the second person of the Godhead. You come to light now. About 12 de definitions for word was bad. There's 16 different definitions for life. Again, we're only going to look at one of them. The sixth one. A spiritual illumination, the light shining in the darkness, the darkness has not overcome. Interesting, Webster, Meredith Webster Dictionary quotes John 1 5. It's the inner light. It's the enlightenment reaching out and groping for a, a pathway to the light. If we seek the light, we are going to find more light. Interesting, this definition here also says 
that that light is going to do this. True. We're going to look at that as a separate claim by busy that I am the way, the truth, the light. But he's the word. He's the light. And the light is truth. The word is the true light. Describes the character of God. He has declared that he was the light of the world. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declared to you that, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. You see how John and 1 John are paralleling here? That you might believe, and that if you believe, you might know. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, cleanses us from all sin. There is no sin that we can do, think, or act upon. It's not forgiven because his blood cleanses us if we walk in the Lord. Chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. Again, a new commandment I read unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shines. You know why they didn't understand in the Old Testament? They were in darkness till the light came. And when the light came, he is the light of the world. And they are now without excuse. We are without excuse. Because we now know that he is the word. He is the light. That true light now shines. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. That's a, a, an interesting thing to do. How many of you have brothers? Yeah. Has there been no sign of you just want to go, hmm, bang head? And if you're like me and my brother, we did bang head several times over the years. Seemed like every two years, we get in a, in a scrap. And you see, uh, as we matured, he would be older and bigger and he'd beat me up. And two years later, I'd, get, I'd grown enough that I, I'd beat him up. And two years later, he'd beat me up. Back and forth, back and forth. But you see, if you hate your brother, you're a liar. And you're in darkness even till now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. I can honestly say that my brother and I have, have, have stopped our petty arguing. And that hatred we have. In fact, it's kind of interesting because after my dad died, my brother came to me and said, Now, you think we can get along with folks that are not putting us one against the other? And we started to have a relationship. Even though our lifestyle is totally different. I can honestly say my brother loves me and I love my brother. He that loves his brother abideth in the light and there is more occasion and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. People react in two ways to the light, though. Light obeyed leads to more light. Light rejected leads to darkness. And haven't you seen some people out there who just reject God, but their whole life is just a mess? Light 
We go following Jesus, though, in 8, 12 of John. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. lessons we need to learn from today. Number one, God revealed his many attributes from time to time. Shame that they didn't understand in the Old Testament he is Elohim. Hear the wisdom of the Lord our God. Elohim is one Lord. God made many appearances to men before becoming that baby in the manger. Clearly evident that Elohim was showing up throughout history. Showing that he was God. That he was flesh. The Father's Spirit, no man ever seen. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? Because it's one Elohim God. You know, even today, God continues to demonstrate His character over and over again by His long suffering. By His grace, by His mercy, by His love. This is the day of salvation. The day of judgment is future. We will either face Elohim as our Savior, 